Hi, it's Nicola at Forever Young Autobiographies. Welcome. Today we're talking about four simple steps for writing an autobiography. And I have some free training to help you do just that at the end, so stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. It's where we learn to write life stories for family and friends so that unique memories can live on for future generations. I'd love for you to subscribe and like the show. Now, let's jump in. I, a few of you may have known, I lived in England for a couple of years, working in newspapers over there, and the English do mazes really well. You know, the whole Alice in Wonderland style. Now, I tried a few while I was over there, and to, to be honest, I got completely lost and I ended up laughing at myself until I remembered a classic maze tip someone gave me, which was always turn left. If you turn left, you can't really get lost because you work your way all the way out of the maze. And this got me thinking, it's kind of similar to when we're writing a life story book, whether that's an autobiography, a biography, a life story of a loved one. Um, you know, if you have the shortcut, if you know how to get out, or it's complicated, if you know the shortcut way to get through this overwhelming task, you know, you've got your roadmap. It's going to be so much easier. So my four simple steps for writing an autobiography is number one, you need to do a little bit of planning. Now for some of you out there, depending on your personality type, you might be skip the planning or you might be, you know, the person who gets bogged down in the detail, the planning. So we want to find somewhere in the middle. We want to find that middle path. So just a tiny bit of planning goes a long way when you're starting out on a project such as a life story book. Now when I'm think, saying planning, I'm saying you just need to get your house in order. You need to sort of think about the basic structure of your book and your chapters. Now there's some key points you need to keep in mind when you do this is number one, who are you writing for and why are you writing? This will really help narrow down what's included in your book. At this point, a lot of people need to sort of remember memories, purge them up from the depths of your memory and get them to the surface. And, so, and you need to start thinking about what are the key memories that really need to go into this book. Now, at this point, some people might do a timeline, they might do a family tree, they might interview other loved ones to just to get their take on things. Also looking through their treasures, so that's sort of memorabilia, diaries, clippings, journals, you know, even things around your house, they all spark memories that can be great to be included in your book. So that's step number one, a little bit of planning, you know you need to do it. Step two, you know what I'm going to say, it's writing. You need to put that pen to paper. But if you've done a little bit of planning, you've got some manageable chunks. It's not overwhelming. You know within your chapters you're going to sort of include these stories and you just start chipping away story after story. You know, and before you know it, you've got quite a decent manuscript or a first draft. But while we're in the writing phase, we need to think about, have we got a key writing space worked out? You know, you'll switch it up a bit, but have you got somewhere comfortable to write? Have you carved out time in your schedule to do this? And have you got the right tools? It might just be a pen and paper, or you know, you might prefer to work on a laptop or a computer or a typewriter. <laughs> People still do that. And of course, don't forget, you might need a support person. You know, it could be a fellow writer, it could be a loved one, it could be a writing coach like me. You just need someone to help motivate you when things get a little bit tough. And you also, in the writing phase, you might want to kind of think about a few writing techniques. Probably things like your theme. Uh, but don't get too overwhelmed. The most important thing is that you need to write. Write, write, and write some more. So that's step number two. Moving on to step number three. Now in my day job as a print editor at a daily newspaper, this is where I spend my, most of my time. It's in the polishing phase. Now polishing, it's sort of when you, you've, it's been written, say in my case a journalist's written it, um, in your case you'd probably want to take a break here. Let your first draft 
marinate, have some time away for it. So when you come back, you have those fresh eyes. Things will pop out at you a lot, a lot clearer. So you're looking for things to correct, but your orders also notice as you work through your first draft, how your writing has evolved from when you first started until, you know, just recently. Writing is a craft. You're going to get better at it the more you do. You know, my first efforts, you know, on rye writing, probably really cringeworthy, but we all have to start somewhere. So just think of that, it is a process. And as you review, you will see that. And you will, you know, not only will you be looking at grammar and spelling, which is, you know, pretty important, but you'll see what needs to be rewritten, what needs to be cut out, and possibly bits that you've missed out that, you know, need to go in. So have that all in your mind as you're polishing away. And don't forget to also include or look at your photo selection and your captions. Some people forget that at this step. Now, step number four to wrap up the show, it's all about publishing. Publishing, this is my favorite bit. This is the most exciting step of the whole process. And to be honest, people sometimes get so excited that they rush this step. But it's all about the design and layout of your finished book. Now, depending on who you're writing for and your budget, there's going to be lots of different options here that you can choose from, whether it's just a handwritten account all the way up to, you know, a fully, uh, like a thousand copies <laughs> printed by a proper printer. So there's lots of, you know, do it yourself options in between all the way up to something professional, but it will suit your time and budget and audience. So keep that in mind. But of course, the most important thing is that you double check that you're happy with everything. Make sure you give everything another thorough read. Maybe let someone else who's a loved one read it so that before you do make all those copies, you're really happy with it. It's nothing worse than seeing something in print and you don't want to read it because you've seen the typo. So make sure you're really happy with the finished product. And then there's nothing else to do but to share your life story and to celebrate. Throw yourself a party. Do a little, you know, impromptu book launch with your family and friends. You have done the hard yards. You have recorded your life stories and memories for future generations. So, you know, celebrate that success. So there you have it, everybody. That's what a writing coach knows on how to write your memoir or to write the life story for a loved one, someone else. So we're just going to recap now just quickly. Number one is to plan. Just a little bit. Planning goes a long way. Next one, put pen to paper. Write. Step three, polish. And of course, step four is publish. So, you know, I just want this video to really encourage you to take the next step, whatever that is, in your writing your life stories so that they're out there for others to read. So if you'd like to know more, this is just a sort of a snapshot of a longer article I've written on this topic on my website, foreveryoungautobiographies.com. So head over there and check that out and also subscribe to other articles I've got coming out. Now I mentioned some free training at the beginning of the show. Now this is the Structure Success video training. It's not too long, just a short training where I hold your hand and we come up with the chapters for your book. So you can really get out of the gate strong, you know what you're doing to start your life story book. So please head to my website for that one or I'll leave the link down below for you. Now, if you've got something out of this article, please subscribe and like and leave me a comment. Where are you up to in your, in your autobiography process? Are you planning? Are you writing, polishing or publishing? Let us know so I can you know, offer some suggestions or tips. So that's the show for this week. I'll be back again so next week. So until then, thanks for watching and happy writing.